Phone and tablet antenna connectors can be tricky to work with sometimes because they're very small and very fragile. This is an iPhone 6 logic board with an antenna for Wi-Fi and GPS, and since these have been known to fail, they often get replaced in the process. Sometimes you break off the connection from the logic board. Well, you don't want to do that, but it happens. And I've had enough people ask me that I thought it was time to make an instructional video to show you how you can reattach these. They generally come off clean, so there's still a pad underneath. Hopefully that's the case for you as well. And in this video, I want to demonstrate how you can do this with a very basic soldering iron. You will need some sort of soldering iron and magnification for this job. Now, if you have a stereo microscope or any type of microscope, really like the one on the right, that would be the best way to approach this. Now, I am demoing a different style of microscope, the one that you see there kind of in the middle of the picture, and it only has an LCD screen, so this is going to be challenging, but again, this is a pretty basic repair. Uh, let's get down to what goes into making this happen. Now these connectors, as you can see, have a very small amount of solder underneath them holding them onto the logic board. That's why they tend to pop off so easily. If you take a look at a schematic, you can see where on the middle area of the top of the board, these things connect to ground on the outside. And then on the inside, they actually go to different locations but for the most part, it's easy enough to tell where they're at as long as you have access to this information and for whatever phone you may be working on, hopefully you can dig that up. I don't have the answer for every phone, but on the iPhone 6, you can see those very small connectors in the middle of the antenna plug go to different areas on the board. Now, when you get over here to the one that's on the end of the board, you can actually see where some of the traces go. A lot of them go to a different part called the antenna ground. It's not the actual ground for the phone, but it's antenna ground for these two. So those are two different places these things are gonna end up. And of course, here we need to be a little more careful because there are some components that can be damaged if you're not careful. When we finish up here, we want to make sure that that center pin actually has continuity to the component you see up towards the top left-hand corner and that it's not making contact with the outer part of the antenna, which is that circular area there. So you will also want to have a multimeter to check this out when you get done. I'm going to start off by adding a small amount of flux here. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to use very basic soldering equipment. If you've got a pair of hot tweezers, you could probably get this off much easier, but there are a few reasons why I might not recommend doing that. And I'll talk about that as we get it, get to the part where we reinstall it. Now make sure that this little pin right here liquefies. Also, you can add some leaded solder there if you need to, but if that doesn't melt and you try to move this thing, it's possible to tear the pad that's underneath. I am going to put a very small amount of tin onto my tip and then flow that onto the connector here until I see everything liquefy. So if you watch the bottom there, you just kind of see that it turns to liquid and when it did, you can gently slide it out of position. Make sure that you don't apply excessive force. If you do, there's a chance of damaging the connection. And once again, you want to use a very, very small amount of solder through this whole process because what holds this onto the board has to be small enough that it doesn't overflow and get onto that round part where the cable plugs in, otherwise the cable won't attach. And looking at what I'm doing right now, we're gonna move this out of the way so we don't lose it because I'm taking, you know, I'm approaching this as if I were using a donor phone to pull an antenna connector off. You might be able to buy these somewhere else. But if we go through here and wick this off so that it's nice and clean, then we'll go back and apply a very small amount of solder once again, you don't need very much and you kind of want to make it look like it did when it came from the factory. So you really don't need much to get these to stay in place. And if you overdo it, it's going to make your life difficult. But I will show you at the end of the video how we can fix that problem when it does occur. So I'm going to add a little more flux. I like to use the MG chemicals for this when I'm setting something in the place. And here is where I went a little heavier on the solder than I needed to. That right there is probably going to be more than you want to apply. But again, I wanted to kind of overdo things here so I can show you how to fix these problems should you encounter them. All right, so the first thing we want to do, and you can clean this off on the backside if you like. This has a very small amount of solder on it. I'm really not going to worry about it. These things don't 
act particularly sensitive. You know, if you have a little extra or a little less solder than necessary, as long as it detaches and you've got a connection and it's held on there fairly secure, then I don't think you're going to have problems with these until you go to unplug them again. So you have to be very careful when you disconnect them. So when you get this thing lined up, this is going to be the tricky part. And if you think you have steady hands, try taking a look at them under a microscope. We want to hold this in place with something like a pair of tweezers and then just come into either side. And once you've got enough heat on one side that you see the solder on the opposite side melt, you can be fairly confident that that center pin is going to be connected as well because we're allowing the heat to go throughout that entire metal piece. And again, I don't worry about damaging these too much. You know, you'd have to have quite a bit of heat to do any damage to this specific part of the phone. There's nothing in the nearby vicinity you really have to worry too much about damaging. So I, I wouldn't go crazy with it, but allowing that heat to sink in there. There's not too much here in this area that you're gonna to have to worry about. Now I'm gonna check that center pin for continuity. It'd probably be a better idea to check with the component up there on the top left-hand corner, but we wanna make sure that these aren't bridged together. So that center pin is not making contact with the outer part, and this little part on the bottom left-hand corner there is what we wanna have continuity to for the antenna ground for this specific connector. So once we're happy with that, I am going to check from right here over to that center pin. So that's what I was talking about earlier. You know, testing to the outside of the connector isn't really gonna give us any accuracy if we're not touching the pad itself. So we wanna make sure everything goes from point A to point B before we put it back together. Now, I do want to remove some of that residual solder. As I mentioned earlier, if you look at this connector, there's no way that antenna wire can plug in because there's too much solder on the outside. And if you run into that, we'll just add some flux, take our wick, and now that we've got this thing somewhat secured on the board, we can go in and wick away any of that extra solder that's kind of floating on top of the flat part of this connector. Now, once we feel like this looks good, we'll go ahead and do a test run and make sure this connects and is laying flat. So I'm gonna to try to angle this so you can get a look down in here and see what this thing should be as far as positioning goes when it's properly plugged in. And you could take a look at another one before you unplug it just to double check and make sure that this is what it's looking like. It's completely seated. And now, of course, I have to go back and straighten this thing out because even though it's good enough to pass, I won't be able to sleep tonight thinking that I didn't get this thing maybe just a little closer to the correct position. So we're going to go in here with some heat once again and tweezers. And this is, when it comes to micro soldering, this is probably one of the easier jobs that you can do and it's probably a great place for people to practice and kind of assess their current skill level don't get discouraged and anyone who wants to judge me keep in mind i'm looking at a one-dimensional lcd screen right now i do not have a stereo microscope for this repair so it is going to look like i'm struggling with this thing and i am because it's very hard to tell what you're doing when you can't see that perspective uh, for inspection it works i was able to perform this repair but i have my doubts as to what I can really get done with something that doesn't have a stereo view of what you're looking at. So that remains to be seen and I will be doing the review on that and on star scope. I will link all of the equipment used in this video and some recommended equipment down in the video description in case you're interested. We will also wipe this off with some rubbing alcohol and then hopefully now end up with something that looks slightly better than it was before. We'll go through, check continuity, make sure everything is functioning, plug it in, and we should have a nice new or newer antenna connector so that we can get Wi-Fi and GPS on this iPhone 6 once again. And you should be able to use this technique with a variety of phones. It's not gonna work in every situation. Sometimes they get things a little close to the antenna connector. But for the most part, they tend to be in an area where they're easy enough to access. So I hope that the, you find this helpful and it at least gets you to the point where you can experiment or see where you're at or maybe fix your phone and hopefully not damaging anything in the process. I wish you the best of luck with this repair. If this doesn't work out, you'll want to practice before you do anything beyond that. If you found the video helpful, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and check out our weekly Tech Talk live stream. Have a great one and thanks for watching.